Ah, more supernatural. Must almost be Christmas time. The movie opens up in Truman High School, where we see a group of high school students having lunch in the dining hall. As they are gossiping about their classmates, a brunette girl named Taylor approaches them to join them for lunch. However, the group rejects her, asserting that their table is a skeeve free zone. Feeling humiliated because she doesn't know what a skeeve is, Taylor turns to another table, where her obese classmate April is eating alone. Having witnessed the bullying, April April attempts to console her, advising her to not pay attention to those people. She also extends an apology on behalf of the bullies. But this only enrages Taylor, who tells her not to feel sorry for her. She also calls her a pig before storming off. The next day, Taylor is crying in the bathroom when April confronts her from behind. She asks if she is really that ugly. Taylor apologizes for what she said and tries to explain that she did not mean it. However, April, who is deeply offended grabs her by the neck and bashes her face hard into the mirror. She then drags her across to a toilet where she holds her head underwater until she stops moving. Following this, a thick black tear drips from April's eyes as she asserts, you are ugly. Title card. <laughs> In the aftermath of the incident, she is seen in a mental health facility where her friend Sam pays her a visit. April, however, does not want to discuss the event any further. She says that she has already provided her account to the police as well as medical professionals, but nobody believes her. They all think that she has gone crazy. However, when Sam insists, she eventually reveals that she was possessed by some kind of mysterious force during the incident. Despite being physically present, she claims to have been mentally absent. She was able to see what she was doing, but could not control herself. Furthermore, she asserts that although she and Taylor did not get along, she never intended to kill her. Before departing, Sam inquires if April noticed any smell of sulfur or black smoke that day, to which the latter replies no. Following this, Sam gets back to his vehicle, where his older brother Dean is waiting for him. He briefs him about the situation, suggesting that a demon may be involved. Dean thinks that it might be a case of a troubled kid reacting to bullying but Sam insists on a thorough investigation. The scene then cuts to a flashback where we see young Sam and Dean entering yet another new high school. Truman is the third school which they have attended that academic year. Dean is not worried about fitting in, since their father has promised that they will only be there two weeks tops. But Sam is tired of always being the new kid. As they enter the class, he seems to be nervous in front of his new peers. Meanwhile, in another classroom, Dean calls his teacher Sweetheart, immediately inspiring all the girls to have crushes on him. While taking a seat, Sam accidentally drops a butterfly knife. He hurriedly retrieves it before the teacher sees it, but not before a classmate named Barry Cook notices. Barry seems to be fascinated by him, so he quickly introduces himself to Sam. Upon settling down on their seats, a fat boy named Dirk starts bullying Barry from behind. Seeing this, Sam takes a stand for his friend and tells Dirk to stop. The bully asks if he wants to take Barry's place, to which the latter intimidatingly responds. Yeah! Back in the present, Sam and Dean disguise themselves in order to enter Truman High School for their secret investigation. Sam poses as a janitor, while Dean plays the part of the substitute gym teacher. As he prepares the students to play dodgeball, Sam comes in with a report. No sulfur, which means no demonic activity, Dean. In the meantime, in a cooking class, a bully student, as usual, tells his nerd partner that he needs to copy his homework again. But this time, the nerdy kid responds with an unsettling game gaze and an evil smile. Not long after, he grabs the bully's hand and shoves it into a running food processor, grinding it brutally. The grim sight freaks out the entire class, causing the students to run away. Just then, Sam rushes into the scene, only to discover the nerdy kid has collapsed. Upon closer examination, he sees a black, thick liquid leaking out from the attacker's ear. This makes Sam realize that they are dealing with some kind of ghost possession, which is rare but not unheard of. Later on, Dean digs up all the school files for information. He learns that the only death incident on the school grounds was the case of a self-kill back in 1998. Here, it is revealed that the one who committed the unthinkable was Barry. He died in the same bathroom where April killed Taylor. All of these incidents indicate that the mysterious entity is targeting the nerds or underdogs to take down the bullies. The scene again takes us back to the past in 1990. 
1997, and we see Barry walking down the hall. Shortly after, Dirk walks past and tackles him down. A group of girls who are standing nearby laugh at him. At the same time, Sam shows up and helps Barry pull everything together. As they begin talking, the latter reveals that he will be out of this school in three years. He shares his plan to relocate to Michigan State in order to prepare for a career in veterinary medicine, believing that animals are a lot nicer than people. Sam agrees and says, I like platypuses. And Barry calls him a nerd. On the other hand, Dean is making out with one of his classmates named Amanda Heckerling. He asks her out on a date later that night, but she refuses. She mentions that her parents don't allow her to be out after 10. As they converse, Amanda asks him about his parents, to which she replies that his father is out of town for a couple of weeks, so he and his younger brother are staying at a local motel. The next day, Barry and Sam are walking together when they are stopped by Dirk. He tries to instigate a fight with them, but Sam firmly refuses. Angered by this, Dirk delivers a powerful punch to his face, sending him to the ground. But before Sam can retaliate, a teacher arrives at the scene and escorts Dirk away. Later, when Dean becomes aware of the incident, he intends to punish Dirk. I'm gonna make him pay, Sam! But his brother stops him from doing so. Sam claims that he does not want to leave a bad impression, and that he just wants to be normal. Changing the subject, he asks about Dean's relationship with Amanda. In response, the latter reveals that she wants him to meet her parents, but he does not want to. Afterwards, Sam is summoned by the English teacher, Mr. Wyatt, in order to discuss an essay assignment. He tells him that the essay was supposed to be non-fiction, unlike what Sam wrote. Despite this, he praises his writing skills, and asks if he has thought of pursuing the craft. However, Sam says, he can't, mentioning his obligation to the family business. Hearing this, Mr. Wyatt asks what he really wants to do. When the boy remains silent, he goes on to say that he was supposed to be a surgeon, just like his dad, but that wasn't him. As a result, he advises Sam to live the life he wants to live. In the present, the brothers salt and burn Barry's remains. Once back in the car, Sam feels guilty, as he believes that he could have helped Barry if their father let them stay a little while longer. Dean then tries to console him, pointing pointing out that there was nothing he could have done. According to him, Barry was already on anti-anxiety meds as his parents were splitting and the school was hell. Due to all of this, he just wanted to get out of his problematic life. Just then, Sam remembers the conversation he had with Mr. Wyatt in the past, so he decides to pay a visit to the teacher. Upon arriving at Truman High School, he walks down the hallway in search of Mr. Wyatt when he is suddenly stopped by a girl. She asks him for directions, after which she addresses him by his name. This surprises Sam, but before he can comprehend the situation, the girl suddenly stabs him in the chest with a pen. In a swift act of defense, Sam fills fills the girl's mouth with salt, expelling the ghost from her body. If she wasn't a ghost, that would have been awkward. Following this, he retreats to Dean, who then hands him some whiskey, asking him to apply it to his wounds. Dean then goes through some files and discovers a commonality. All the possessed students ride the same school bus, which is driven by Dirk's father. The duo then goes to check the bus, where they find a new permit that is registered in the name of Dirk. This triggers Sam's recollection of a past confrontation with Dirk. One day, Barry was being bullied by him, as usual. When Sam showed up, he was pushed to the ground as well. However, he stood right back up and fought the bully. He delivered some powerful punches and eventually defeated him. Upon witnessing this, all the students started to make fun of Dirk, regarding him as a weak guy. Dirk the dick! He's got a small dick! In the present, the brothers find the address to Dirk's place, so they head towards it. There, they meet with his father, who reveals that Dirk died at the age of 18 after years of abusing alcohol and drugs. He laments that the school was never easy for Dirk, and that people called him Dirk the Jerk. No, no, it was Small Dick Dirk. You heard it here. A nickname Sam came up with after beating him in a fist fight. In addition, the father discloses that his wife died of cancer when Dirk was 13, and since he had to do three jobs, he was unable to take proper care of his son. Realizing that Dirk's spirit is causing all of this, Dean cuts to the chase and asks where he is buried. In response, the father tells him that Dirk was cremated, but he kept a lock of his hair in his Bible on the bus. Meanwhile, the very same bus is transporting a sports team to an away game. On the way, the substitute driver Eddie has black sludge dripping from his nose, indicating that he is possessed by the ghost. As a result, he speeds the bus, sending the passengers into a state of panic. A short while later, Sam and Dean somehow managed to stop the bus by blowing at its tires with the help of spikes. 
legs. As soon as Eddie walks out of the vehicle, the brothers tie him up with a rope. Dean then gets on the bus to find the Bible, while Sam holds the possessed guy at gunpoint. However, the mere rope is not enough to hold Eddie, as he soon frees himself. This leaves Sam with no choice but to gun him down. D Dean! Shortly after, Dirk's spirit possesses a member of the sports team and comes to attack the brothers again. While Sam tries to fight the possessed individual, Dean manages to locate Dirk's hair in Eddie's pocket. Sam! He immediately sets it ablaze, finally freeing the spirit. In the final scene, Sam finally visits Mr. Wyatt, who has grown very old. He thanks him for his great advice, that one should make his or her own choices. The teacher asserts that the only thing that really matters is if one is happy. He then asks if he is happy, but Sam is unable to answer. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.